when the FBI director says that the Secretary of State was extremely careless and negligent in handling our classified secrets. I also know that these terms are minor compared to what she actually did. They were just used to save her from facing justice for her terrible, terrible crimes. In fact, her single greatest accomplishment may be committing such egregious crime and getting away with it, especially when others who have done far less have paid so dearly. When that same Secretary of State rakes in millions and millions of dollars trading access and favors to special interests and foreign powers, I know the time for action has come. And I have to say, as a Republican, it is so nice to hear you cheering for what I just said. Thank you. <laughs> to protect us from terrorism, we need to focus on three things. We must have the best absolutely the best gathering of tele intelligence anywhere in the world. The best. We must abandon the failed policy of nation building and regime change that Hillary Clinton pushed in Iraq, in Libya, in Egypt, and in Syria. Instead, we must work with all of our allies who share our goal of destroying ISIS and stamping out Islamic terrorism and doing it now, doing it quickly. We're going to win. We're going to win fast. This includes working with our greatest ally in the region, the State of Israel. My opponent has called for a radical 550 percent increase in Syrian Think of this. Think of this. This is not believable, but this is what's happening. A 550 percent increase in Syrian refugees on top of the existing massive refugee flows coming into our country already under the leadership of President Obama. She proposes this despite the fact that there is no way to screen these refugees in order to find out who they are or where they come from. I only want to admit individuals into our country who will support our values and love our people. Anyone who endorses
versus violence, hatred or oppression, is not welcome in our country and never, ever will be. <laughs> Decades of record immigration have produced lower wages and higher unemployment for our citizens, especially for African-American and Latino workers. We are going to have an immigration system that works, but one that works for the American people. I have been honored to receive the endorsement of America's Border Patrol agents. And we'll work directly with them to protect the integrity of our lawful, lawful, lawful immigration system. Lawful. By ending catch and release on the border, we will end the cycle of human smuggling and violence. Illegal border crossings will go down. We will stop it. It won't be happening very much anymore, believe me. Peace will be restored by enforcing the rules for millions who overstay their visas. Our laws will finally receive the respect that they deserve. Tonight, I want every American whose demands for immigration security have been denied, and every politician who has denied them, to listen very, very closely to the words I am about to say. On January 20th of 2017, the day I take the oath of office, Americans will finally wake up in a country where the laws of the United States are enforced. We are going to be considerate and compassionate to everyone. But my greatest compassion will be for our own struggling citizens. USA, 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 USA. My plan is the exact opposite of the radical and dangerous immigration policy of Hillary Clinton. Americans want relief from uncontrolled immigration, which is what we have now. Communities want relief, yet Hillary Clinton is proposing mass amnesty, mass immigration, and mass lawlessness. Her plan will overwhelm your schools and hospitals, further reduce your jobs and wages, and make it harder for recent immigrants to escape the tremendous cycle of poverty that they're going through right now and make it almost impossible for them to join the middle class. I have a different vision for our workers. It begins with a new fair trade policy that protects our jobs and stands up to countries that cheat, of which there are many.
It's been a signature message of my campaign from day one, and it will be a signature feature of my presidency from the moment I take the oath of office. I have made billions of dollars in business-making deals. Now I'm going to make our country rich again. Using the greatest business people in the world, which our country has, I am going to turn our bad trade agreements into great trade agreements. America has lost nearly one-third of its manufacturing jobs since 1997, following the enactment of disastrous trade deals supported by Bill and Hillary Clinton. Remember, it was Bill Clinton who signed NAFTA, one of the worst economic deals ever made by our country or, frankly, any other country. Never, ever again. I am going to bring back our jobs to Ohio and Pennsylvania and New York and Michigan and all of America. And I am not going to let companies move to other countries, firing their employees along the way without consequence. Not going to happen anymore. My opponent, on the other hand, has supported virtually every trade agreement that has been destroying our middle class. She supported NAFTA, and she supported China's entrance into the World Trade Organization, another one of her husband's colossal mistakes and disasters. She supported the job-killing trade deal with South Korea. She supported the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which will not only destroy our manufacturing, but it will make America subject to the rulings of foreign governments, and it's not going to happen. I pledge to never sign any trade agreement that hurts our workers or that diminishes our freedom and our independence. We will never, ever sign bad trade deals. America first. Again, America first. That, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. That, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. That, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. That, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. That, you didn't build that. Somebody else.